welcome everyone um, uh, today um, yeah, as part of the outscale seven day masterclass we'll have nakul as well uh, just a quick sort of an introduction my name is uh, mayank i'm the founder of outscale i've been in the game industry for 10 plus years now worked across the board with a bunch of studios uh, in india and us across the board uh, and for the last two and a half three years now we've been helping sort of developers um, get into the game industry um, you know and help them sort of kind of get jobs and become professional developers um, today i have nakul with me uh, nakul is the founder of playbay uh, he's a solo developer indie developer hardcore guy and you know um, uh, has launched his own title called in my shadows uh, i think uh, uh, most of you actually yeah, would have you know seen some youtube video of it etc um, at least for me when when malar from that we should invite nakul as a guest speaker uh, i was like okay wait who's nakul he was like oh the developer of in my shadows i was like wait what is this game and then the moment he showed me the trailer i was like oh i've seen this trailer <laughs> i just didn't recall the name of the game and i knew the trailer from back in the day as well so you know it's so great to finally get to a chance to chat with nakul as well so nakul welcome and um, any opening words you want was you want to share with the audience as well yeah like uh, i'm really glad to be here uh, and i'm sorry it took me so so long to come here because like you know the solo dev journey is really hard and i have always been fully occupied with everything that's going on yeah and cool. i'm very happy to see the love that i've got from the indian community especially from the students community uh, yeah and i was i'm just glad that i could inspire students so that they can also make similar games perfect so you had sort of you know uh, ceo of big name titles people who have raised crap ton of money to build game studios etc uh, you know senior lead developer slash a bunch of you know director level people before on the conversation i think this is the first time we are actually hosting somebody who's a solo indie developer who has actually had some success in terms of launching an actual indie title um, you know so so i think everybody he has at some point or the other that as a dream uh, today we'll get into the more sort of nitty gritty and learn from your experience as well but i think first of all uh, i think there's a uh, a uh, a big amount of congratulations in order as well because uh, nakul just announced a couple of days ago or i think yesterday only on his linkedin channel on his linkedin uh, post that that you guys got selected in the indie accelerator program that google runs every year or every six months or something like that right so congrats nakul and and you know uh, how did you guys get selected into that program etc why don't you just start with that and share us the overall experience there yeah it was an amazing experience like uh it happens i think every year i'm not sure mm. if it if it happens every 6 months or not uh but yeah i have been uh, like keeping an eye out for this event since to 2019 i think i did not apply in 2019 but i applied in 2020 uh in 2020 th- this did not happen uh, a local version of it happened only for india and uh, like there also play big got selected but because i did not have any team members they had this particular requirement so i could mm. not get into that but i'm super happy that like this time i got into it and the process was relatively simple like you have to fill up a very big form mm-hmm. and all that but it's the same thing like they are also very happy with the product uh, in my shadow and they really would want to have games like this being made on google play so i think it was a good fit for them perfect perfect so um uh, let's start with a little bit of the basics what kind of got you motivated and how did you get started with indie when did you sort of think that mm. okay i can do this as a solo developer right hmm uh, like you said like every everyone has this dream right having this own solo dev or if not solo dev like an indie dev uh, dream mm. every kind of hardcore game developer has that has that dream and uh, it's not very easy to pursue that dream it's just like some kind of coincidental events that uh, make that kind of lead you to that path so for, in my case obviously i was just I always wanted to make games but I never considered being a full time indie and hmm. uh, I was uh, so I started making games in 2013 in my college days and after that I got a placement from my college with from for some other field like not gaming but as a data analyst hmm. uh, but I still wanted to try game development once professionally so I quit that job after like 5 to 6 months and I got into gaming and then I realized yeah this is like very natural for me and I should be here so what motivated me exactly was like to keep making games was when i played the game limbo 
and mm. so limbo was probably my first uh, indie game that i bought uh, and like same. and i knew <laughs> exactly the fucking same it was the first the purchase thing. i made yeah. on steam the first freaking purchase i made on steam when i actually got my first salary <laughs> Oh nice. Oh yeah, you you have been there for, since the last 10 years so. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you are a very old player. I played <laughs> it on mobile. Yeah, I and... that that time no, mobile didn't even exist, yeah, right? Like exactly. the first Android phone had just came out and this is like I think uh, 2009 or something I forgot when. But but yeah. I so... think it 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 must have been around 2010 because I think that is when it correct. came out. Correct. So correct. I played it in around 14 or 15 I think. I, I don't remember. Hmm. It's been hmm. a while, yeah. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying this episode. My name is Mayank Grover. I'm the founder of Outscale. I wanted to take a minute to tell you about our flagship game development program where we take students all the way from starting to job ready in six months. We directly partner with over 100 plus game companies where we help students directly crack into these companies by giving them the right kind of skills, both technical as well as non-technical and getting them in front of these companies for interview processes. If you're interested in becoming a full stack game developer, please check out our website, www.outscale.com or check the link in the description below. Now back to this episode. Awesome. Yeah, no, I think it's all like these kind of classic Hmm. offbeat kind of games are the ones that really motivate and inspire Hmm. um, a lot of the indies, right? Because there's a lot of creative thought process that goes behind it, right? So um, so you, you mentioned, right, something interesting here that while your job placement was in something like data analyst, right? Mm. Uh, but you still kind of figured out that, okay, no, 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 fuck it. I want to mm. jump into this thing full time. I made that yeah. leap from a proper software developer role mm. and went back into being a student again and becoming a game developer again. And, you know, uh, starting from an intern. Uh, so oh, wow. so generally speaking, right? Like what, uh, like how did you fight that social inertia that usually comes with key? Uh, you know, uh, beta, there is a stable job, don't quit it, etc, etc, mm. right? So was there too much pushback uh, that you had to go with? I think you might be the better person to answer that because you most probably had more social inertia. Because <laughs> you, your path is even more kind of uh, drastic, like from a software engineer to an intern. Uh, mine was still a little safer because I was going from a fresher data analyst to a fresher game developer. So mm. there was just a small difference in salary and a very huge difference in brand, but it was still relatively safer. So like, obviously I, not a lot of social inertia, obviously. Uh, I got a lot of support from my parents and uh, since it was not a risky decision at that time. Uh, mm. But yeah, the, so the thing is that you don't always have to take risks. You can uh, like still take a safe decision and uh, make your parents or anyone in the society, make them assured that, okay, the choice you have made is good. Uh, so for that, you have to study, you have to prepare and you have to have a plan. You can't just say that, okay, I like gaming. So that's why I'm just going to switch to a very yeah. inferior company. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. majority of people, the first thing that you ask them, right? Like, Hey, why do you want to become a game developer? Because I love gaming. It's like not uh, good enough, yeah. right? Not good enough. There's a lot of, you have to have a, some kind of skill and some kind of thing, something that can back your interest. Correct. So I was making games in my college time. And like, even before mm. my, uh, college completed, uh, I, I did have a proper uh, fully published game on play store. So that learned that kind of that experience uh, taught me a lot. And mm. so it was very kind of uh, straightforward and easy for me to get into game development as a professional game developer, because not a lot of freshers have this experience of having their own game on a play store on the play store. Yeah. So yeah. Perfect. If you can back your interest with some skill or some uh, tangible thing, then it's relatively less risky. Mm. Yeah. True. True. Guys, uh, as I cover questions with Nikhil, uh, Nakul, just feel free to just put in more questions in the chat and I'll curate them from the mm-hmm. conversation there as well. <laughs> as somebody mentioned that <laughs> Mrinal is saying we got Limbo for free on at the Epic Store. <laughs> I think the new shit, right? Like <laughs> earlier I was buying it for 500 bucks. You probably bought it for like 150 bucks on the Play Store or 200 bucks. I think it's about 250 or 350, something like that. Something I think like still, that, right? Still the same price. Correct. So, and then Epic comes in and just like, all right, take these games for free. Uh, mm. So, yeah. Okay, awesome. So, mm, I think there's one very common parallel between you and me as well that that you decided to continue your journey as for a, for a large part of the time as a solo developer, right? And uh, you know, you might have worked with a bunch of freelancers for either art or sound or 
things like that right but still the primary responsibility to make or break or the success of the entire project kind of relies on your shoulders right um it's very similar to being a, a solo founder as well right like a lot of people have told me yaar ki solo founding is very hard get a co-founder i was like yeah i'm, I'm i know don't tell me i am living through it right <laughs> you don't need to tell me about it so so how do you sort of cope up with you know the because it's a for folks who might not realize being solo on any project that's monumental and impactful has a very it takes a lot of emotional toll right it has a lot of ups and downs right uh, so so how do you sort of try and keep up and keep the mental levels you know uh, modulated yeah uh, so obviously like tell me about it like solo journey solo founder anything is very difficult incredibly difficult you can take help from uh, hundreds of people but still all the burden and all the load will be on your shoulders so hmm. it's hard to manage all that and the hardest thing is that you can't just make a game you have to manage people you have to manage the assets and the timeline so you have to play multiple roles so yeah. it is really hard to balance things and i would say i like i managed to make it work somehow but i wouldn't say i'm i'm very good at it because it does not come natural to me like development and uh, creation creation like that comes naturally mm. to me and planning also come naturally comes naturally to me but Uh, managing people managing all the talent that we have that's really hard so uh, it's really difficult to balance everything but you just have to have that like proper plan and timeline in your some kind of software tool or in your notebook mm. or anything and stick to it no matter what just stick to it obviously mm. there will be delays and there will be a lot of delays like right? Uh, and no matter how much you uh, take your buffer time it will the time will still you will feel that it's less time so take a lot of uh, like plan very uh, judiciously and take a lot of factors into account and that's how you you can if you have some kind of a goal in your head and goal that you can see then it's a bit simpler to stick to it otherwise it can get overwhelming very soon like i have been overwhelmed throughout the journey and uh, with every milestone it keeps getting a little more clear that okay now next milestone i'm going to do this correctly so it's still yeah. a very big learning process for me that I, i'm sure i'm still going to make a lot of mistakes now and just going to learn from them and hopefully incorporate them in the next project got it so um uh, so i promise this is my last question and then i'll take the audience question uh, so for in my shadow what was the sort of the the thesis behind like did you always knew from the get go ki okay yaar i'm going to launch a game on on the steam store and and directed towards the specific target audience etc or uh, did you start with just a random prototype or a concept in mind and then uh, the marketing and the other pieces kind of evolved around it and the strategy for which audience you're going to go after what was the kind of the ideation process and how did it evolve over the course of the development cycle yeah it was exactly the latter one that you just said that no plan as such just a random prototype and you play around with it you show it to people people like it and uh, the major breakthrough for me was when i had this prototype i was just making it in my office like office hours mm-hmm. and my like after office hours so the major breakthrough was when i participated in the igdc thing uh, igdc 2018 mm-hmm. uh, so deepak gurujala who is the founder of street lamp games that's also an indian uh, indie yeah. game company they are they, they have pretty cool games so i just talked to him before this just randomly like as a fan and he suggested me that why don't you come into this thing uh, igdc mm. and i never had an idea about that and i never had any any plans of that and i thought okay yeah, let's let's just try this out and i did try it out and uh, to my surprise it got into the final 5 or final 8 i don't know so that was when i started i i just thought okay let's just give it a shot and i went to it and to my extreme surprise and delight it just it won everything like it won the final thing and as the most uh, the best upcoming game of the year and hmm. so after that the all the pieces started to fit in that what do you want to do do you want to make a full game hmm. do you want to make a mobile game do you want to go with a publisher obviously this is not the ideal way the ideal way is that yeah. you have everything in your mind you know what yeah. target audience you want what platform do you want do you want a publisher or not i just went by the feels and 
uh, whatever just kept coming along i just uh, kept responding to it and adapting to it that's why this game took a very long time like if it was just a hobby project or just yeah. a company based project right even like some professional thing this game would have been completed in one and a half year or maximum two years right. but yeah. uh, this took me around three three years like the entire process because there was a lot of change there were a lot of changes prototype then the demo then you you scrap everything off then you get a publisher then pc then mobile then consoles so it, mm. it is a he- very very long journey got it yeah i think uh it's always the case right like einstein 2020 right so hard to predict these kind of things mm-hmm. um yeah good awesome so um okay i'll take some questions up as well uh anand yeah. is asking how many game projects are you actually working on at any given time just one just one like that's gonna be in fact that is uh, one of my motto of the company like one memorable game at a time no matter what i'm not gonna work on two mm. games like even uh, what happened when when i was starting this game uh, when i left my job uh, then obviously there was a very very small pressure in your own head like not from the society from your own head that that you don't have any salary right now so what are you going to do uh, even though i did have a plan that okay let's just put one year i have enough savings but still you just we have this mindset that there should be some source of income right Definitely. so i thought that why don't why don't why, why shouldn't i try freelancing on this upwork or anything Mm-hmm. but it just did not click to me i just did not want to do it i never felt like doing it uh, so i just made up my mind that i'm not never going to make uh, more than one project at, at a time no matter what Sorry. yeah no i think that's pretty spot on and then uh, regarding the point on work i actually for the first 3 years when i was trying to do indie dev between 2016 and 19 um i started two indie studios well one indie studio and one proper game studio doing kind of a gamification a uh, product at the intersection of game and finances trying to do something as a work freelance thing suddenly that takes up so much time even if you have like a project that it kind of takes away all the focus of why the hell you do start doing this in the first place right and suddenly your passion project becomes the secondary thing and this up work project becomes your primary thing because now you have deadlines to deliver and you know if you don't end up meeting it then you're not going to get paid etc anyways so it's like you know that hindi saying right like dobi ka kutta na ghar ka na ghat ka which means you're not neither in this bucket nor on that bucket uh, so you end up kind of becoming that i don't know if you had that experience i've had that experience multiple times so that's why i could relate to it my i did not even try i just checked out the projects that were coming and i thought no no i'm not going to try that <laughs> and i felt that like it's the worst of both worlds like worst exactly. of exactly. security and the creativity freedom not yeah, the best yeah, yeah. instead go and do a job for 5 days and it yeah, is exactly. saturday and sunday to do a you know your yeah, game that hobby thing i would definitely prefer a job over freelancing i don't know how people do freelancing but a job feels much and even like after spending 3 years working not 2 and a half years working like this so i feel that jobs jobs are really easy <laughs> compared mm-hmm. to freelance life or sort of like jobs are like side display now i yeah. now i consider I that wish, okay i mean yeah. i wish i had my entire team on this call Yeah, <laughs> jobs are easy. <laughs> like they'll they'll start to blame you. Oh man, man, this man, that. <laughs> yeah, you won't know un- un- until uh, until you just start up your own thing. Then you'll realize what is the hardest thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And there goes Manar in the chat. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Uh, so somebody had asked regarding sort of learning new programming language, or just we can broaden the context, right? So as you're thinking about building new projects, if you have to learn something. new right like not just from a programming language but a engine or a framework or could be anything right so if we broaden up the context of the question um how do you sort of approach learning as well as building something at the same time how do you sort of go about balancing that hmm so obviously preferably you should you don't have to switch technologies like obviously you have to learn new modules and sometimes new kind of frameworks as well uh but hopefully you don't have to do it uh, like stick to your strength don't mm. spend a lot of time on learning new things uh, but obviously you have to be good at way, at one thing first right so suppose like let's take an example of unity so if you have to if you have to make your next game and you know unity uh and you you know that it can be done on both on unity and unreal both then mm. obviously stick to unity like right? don't just go by the trend that okay more and more games are being made on uh, unreal so i'm going to switch to unreal Uh, yeah. but sometimes obviously you can get the situation that only unreal would be, would be a 
the best choice for it and uh, unity would be not would not be a very good choice for it then in that case uh, your skill should back it up because logically everything is the same languages are just a tool and even yeah. the tools are just tools right the logic is the main thing what your what logic you are using in unity that's the same logic in that you're going to use in unreal but just that you'll have to spend some more time and mm. so the best case would be that you have someone experienced with you uh, who knows about these things so that you can just quickly bounce off of them and understand and like get on to that track mm. as soon as possible yeah and i think uh, at the end of the day it's kind of like a mathematical equation right so you can always say that okay i'm going to take two months learning unreal and then it's going to take me six months to build this right versus because i'm already say eight on 10 in unity it will take me four months to get the entire thing done right yeah, for example exactly. so now you have a very clear mathematical window of saying that hey do you want to spend eight months versus four months and eventually get to a roughly the same outcome right mm -hmm. assuming that your skills are equally good then mm -hmm. you will get to the same game product at the end of it then do you want to invest eight months do you have the money or the savings or the resources to invest eight months or do you want to do it in four months and quickly get it out right so having yeah. that clear mathematical calculation in mind even though high level very approximate but it mm -hmm. gives you a very concise answer as to you know like nakul was saying right like stick with your skills right like if you have already acquired skills you should double down on those skills rather than just going you know oh i'm going to spend one month on unity one month on unreal one yeah. month on c++ blah 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 right like yeah. at the end of the day become the master of what you already know exactly and at the end of the day remember this like like customers don't give a fuck <laughs> right yeah, they don't, <laughs> they don't, they don't even know whether you made is yeah whether you made yeah. it with unity or unreal if they love it they love it if they hate it they hate it they'll tell you right yeah but this question might be also relevant to people who are just like beginners right so mm -hmm. in that case you should try out new things just to see oh, which yeah. one which one appeals to you more yep no i think the original question was specifically because of the context of building a product and then yeah, okay. launching it and while learning so i think yeah, that yeah. way our previous answer was pretty much mm. spot on but but good thing yeah. you added that as a caveat towards the end mm. um, yeah like when you're a beginner don't don't stick to what you know <laughs> then try to experiment more more or less you don't know much so yeah, it's okay. exactly <laughs> Good, awesome. So I think uh, somebody had asked earlier in the chat. I missed this question. Um, like, how do you? Because if you don't have much resources or something, how do you sort of think about um, um, getting your games to showcase in conferences, major league conferences, etc.? How do you end up sort of presenting on those stages if you don't have much resources or funding or publishing connections, etc.? Right. So especially if you're just let's say starting out as an indie developer, right? Uh. i would say that it it is actually uh, much easier than it seems right uh, in my starting of my journey till 2019 october november i was completely bootstrapped and uh, no funding or no publisher not, no contacts at all and uh, it was very easy to just get into apply into events have a prototype of your game and apply into events so i got into four or five international events just by applying obviously many events have uh, fees that you have to entrance fee and all that and many international events will obviously be expensive because you have to travel to that place uh, so that's kind of an investment that you have to like assess and judge on the basis of whether you want to whether would it be that beneficial or not hmm. uh, but it's, it's relatively simple to just apply and showcase if your game is good enough your game will get to the top uh, like it's resources are resources come when uh you have to kind of promote it or advertise it or uh, just increase the quality of it or add more features to it that's where resources come showcasing thankfully for indies is in most of the events is free or it's very cheap very affordable got it yeah um but normally like just a slight bit of extension and i'm adding my question here uh, on top um like what was your experience sort of trying to market the game um did you need a lot of resources did you rely heavily on sort of a lot of organic word of mouth what was the strategy behind thinking around okay now the game is out i want as many people to buy it etc etc right so like, so what was your thought process and strategy that that ended up working or if something failed massively as well do share uh i did have a lot of plans but we failed at that because of the fact that everything got delayed in the end Uh, mm. like ideally near the launch you should have a lot of time for yourself to do all the organic marketing and 
talk to people approach people mm-hmm. approach press and approach reviewers and all that so you should have a lot of time and you should have a lot of good marketing assets like trailers and all these social media assets and all that so this is where i think uh, it kind of fell short for in my shadow in the end uh, because the last one or two months were really rushed and that that kind of our trailer suffered because of that like at the launch time we did not have a trailer and uh, some of the features were missing in the launch build but the actually the focus was that like for this game mobile is the primary platform mm. like pc was more of a uh, like first shot then let's just do it and let's just put it out to the public and see what what comes out and mm. all the feedback all the positive and the negative feedback that we've got from uh, the pc build i have made sure to spend a lot of time fixing those and uh, the mobile build should prob- should be much much better than the pc build got it okay but did you think about sort of adding more resources to the project as you started mm. to see the financial viability of the project also taking up that came mm. hey, we could get this done faster why not hire at least somebody yeah. junior to tag with you and and you still take the lead role but then you know you can get things done much much quicker because at least now you have a clarity of thought that okay yes we are launching we've already launched on one platform now we can target even multiple platforms and so on and so forth yeah the the one good thing with this project is that we have a publisher right so the hmm. publisher has the resources for porting and localization and all those all those major things right but all the organic things and even the development part i had to take care of all all on on my own so that is where i would like if i had to change something i would have spent more time building a team instead of just hiring freelancers because mm-hmm. having a very stable and very tr- reliable team is much better because it will obviously in the beginning you will have to spend a lot of time uh, and money to get them mm-hmm. on board and all that but in the longer run it kind of saves time uh, so that's where i think i should have spent resources on building that right team and uh, delegating more tasks to people who would have done a better job who who would have had done a better job at it as compared to myself because i was obviously to- occupied with a lot of factors a lot yeah. of aspects true true um so somebody asked this and i think it's a pretty relevant question as well as you have sort of finished one project now right and you have seen that entire sort of life cycle play out sure there might be localization and porting that's already going on right mm-hmm. um and you might be launching in new regions etc cetera, etc cetera. but but you've now gone full circle right and now if you start thinking about a new project right like what do you think are the advantages this time that you would have and and how would you sort of go about doing things differently oh yeah like uh, now i know a lot more like uh, <laughs> there have been tons of learnings and i will change almost everything that <laughs> i had done initially uh, resource management team management uh, timeline management and specific targeting of the market and having a clear plan of marketing from the from the first day mm. like when would you want to publish it where, where would you want to publish it uh, what kind of marketing strategy would work for a game like this what has been working for games like these and so res- like spending more time on researching and planning and team building is the kind of the new the, the major learning that i've done got it but like do you think would that mean that playway would no longer be a, a single man studio and transform into a full fledged indie team uh, maybe four people five people something like that in in some i am time. not really sure uh, i'm not really sure but uh, yeah that might be the case because uh, i like being a solo founder and solo developer is really, really stressful mm. and uh, there comes a time where you just have to just like survive that you have to just make it happen make it yeah. happen yeah uh, the creative process is gone now it's just like you have just have to do it and the product also suffers because of that so mm. i would definitely would want a good partner uh, the partner who would the problem with me is that that i can do a lot of things myself and i can do good job at that at all those things so it's really hard to find someone who is as passionate and as skilled as i am obviously then obviously there are a lot of people but you don't you have to look for them right right and so if i find someone who is like uh, somewhere around that same passion and skill level and also that mindset and even better if he or she completes the the, the imperfections that i have like yeah. uh, in the things that i don't like to do 
and that is that is their strength so then obviously i won't be restricting myself to just being a one person team but mm. at for now i don't have a target like let's let's build a team of 5 or 10 i Bye. just know that let's see how the mobile game mm. does and then let's plan accordingly which kind what scale of project would i want maybe the next project would be even smaller in terms of scale and then it wouldn't make sense to expand yeah i think my just <laughs> i'll just share my two cents here as because i for, for the first 3 years i struggled to find a co-founder as well and exactly the same problem right like you need to if you are multi talented um, you know having strong background in tech um product game dev understanding the gaming marketplace business etc right it's it was hard to for me to find a co-founder as well right and then eventually what ended up happening the realization i had after 3 years of failed attempts of finding a co-founder as trying to build out real was like fuck it i'm not going to do it <laughs> right and and instead i'm going to find people who the last thing that you mentioned uh, complete the in- inconsistencies or the skills that i lack right so the first person that i started to look for was somebody that comes from strong operational background because i had zero fuck experience in operations right but building out scale for the last 3 years i learned a lot of operations and and from there i was able to find somebody senior to come in and now take ownership and and like you mentioned earlier right like do that thing but do it much much better than i would be able to because i'm already doing 20 other things as well right so so rather than trying to find a perfect uh, co-founder to marry you find uh, you know functional leaders who can take ownership of that functional and do that thing really really well right as you're trying to grow as a, as a team right so i think my thought process has evolved into this. maybe you are also on the same journey so i thought i'll share my two cents there as well so uh, nikul i'm not able to hear you i think the voice got cut out no fine now ah uh, yes yes yeah okay i don't know yeah i completely resonate with what you're saying and uh, you have at least spent 3 years finding co-founder right i haven't really spent a lot of time i was just waiting for someone to find me <laughs> so uh, yeah. i will probably spend some time finding but uh, i i think that most likely it will be the same path as yours like uh, find find people who are better at those things than you already are yeah yeah, yeah. perfect and it so definitely think... will help if you already know things then it will hmm. help you find better people Correct. In, Correct. instead yeah. of like average people yep i think so so one last question and mm-hmm. just to be respectful of your time then we'll wrap it up yeah. as well um so um somebody asked this uh, that if you're stuck on a technical problem when you're working on a game project right uh, especially because you're solo you don't have too many people to bounce off ideas etc with mm-hmm. so how do you sort of feel um uh, you know what, what's your creative process or thought process to get yourself unblocked and not get stuck on something way too long oh yeah uh, like that's a very painful question <laughs> because i i go through that a lot uh, there are a lot of times when i just get stuck and i i wish that oh shit i i ho- i hope i wish that someone senior to me was there in my team where i could just ask uh but unfortunately the uh, the, the hard answer is that you have to do it yourself mm. no matter what uh, you know since you don't have anyone to bounce ideas off even i don't i don't have anyone uh, i have friends i have a lot of game dev connections but it's very difficult to talk to them about one specific thing because it's very hmm. uh, like it's very contextual right uh, and you can't just explain everything to them and uh, then they'll need time to understand it first and then they'll be able to help so uh, the best is that like uh, obviously if you are going solo you have to be strong at something very strong at something hmm. uh, very good at something like i was very good at all like programming things not core programming but i was good at game development thing like i just knew my way to solve problems solve game development problems so no matter what you do even if i don't know anything i'll just look it up on the internet and hmm. probably not in the first go but keep trying keep trying i will find it somehow uh, yeah but yeah, just don't give up and but it will definitely help if you have some connections uh, who are very close to you and who are much better than you Uh, that and that you can like keep in touch with from the very starting mm. uh, and that will you don't have to like provide a lot of context every time yeah yeah and I, i i'm not sure if you have seen the concept of mentors work in the game industry i personally haven't there's a very strong uh, mentor relationship in the tech ecosystem right like i mm. right now i have 
two three mentors that i look up to because i know i am a solo founder if i mm. start thinking about a problem within outscale right i might literally bang my head on the wall for the next mm. one week and i might not get anywhere right so for my thing is like i quickly reach out to those mentors and say these are also ex founders who are probably five steps ahead of me right and mm. they've gone through that journey so so they know they might not be able to give exact technical details but they'll generally be able to give good sort of guidelines to think on and think around and okay why 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 are you even thinking like this like this is absolutely the wrong way to think think like this right they might pose a different question that might change the perspective right this is one thing i feel like is uh, in my experience 100% missing in the gaming ecosystem the, pe- the people haven't yet really latched on to this concept of a mentor mentee relationship uh, yeah. whether it's from a solo dev indie dev professional developer perspective could could be multiple right like but mm. but i feel like that could unlock a lot of potential within people both from creative technical perspective as well i'm not sure if you've experienced anything something like this or not no i have had mentors like uh, i have a lot of connections the, the the good thing about the indie game scene in india is like it's very small it's right? very small so yes. mo- if you participate in events and if you participate participate in competitions and uh, even the meetups right you will know everyone so mm-hmm. and most of them are like they started just like us like as solo developers solo yeah. developers just starting out with their own random prototype so in that way uh, throughout this journey i have had taken i have had help from a lot of mentors like deepak chirag uh, mm. the de- uh, developer of raji yeah. which you know that right Yeah. Uh, so I do reach out to them a lot about things like when should I promote it? When sh- what should I do with, at this time of the sale? Hmm. Or have any idea of how to do this and that? But in like it depends, right? If you if you, if you want answers on the larger scale, then you will get mentors and like ex founders and uh, current founders of other companies, right? But for technical thing, uh, it's very difficult to find a mentor because like 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 I said, like it needs a lot of context and hmm. a lot of uh, really close understanding so that even they are able to spend that time with you to make yeah. sure to debug that problem so i think uh, technical mentors should be a thing i have no idea if it is a thing or not uh, it, but it should they be. Yeah, it should be but then mentors are up to you like you have to talk to people this is where this is where even i am i'm good at but i'm not really good at like i could i could get better at this like i've talked to all the indian people and even some international people but i know that other people they even reach out to a lot other uh, developers and then they get more and more uh, like wider perspective of things instead mm. of just like talking to the people that you only know that you already know right so i already knew chirag and deepak and avichal that's why i talked to them right mm. but mm. Uh, other game developers and especially international in the international community they talk to random game developers if they have a problem and people are really helpful even i have done yeah. that once or twice that's it but mm. you can do that more much much of, more often than what i did and that's where i think you will really notice a difference uh, it's all up to you like don't depend on uh, probably the community to help you you will have to find help and you will easily get help if you have that intention yep yep no i 100% agree i think people underestimate the power of networking yeah. and just reaching out for help right a lot of people yeah, exactly. are actually willing to help as long as they know that their help is needed right then mm. not magically going to know right so same for you as well right like yeah. people your ideal co-founder might exist out there right like yeah. the <laughs> but just you'll have to, you will have to find to it, reach yeah. out yeah yeah perfect yeah. so so i know we overstretched by a little bit so my apologies there right. but uh, yeah. but again thanks again nakul for showing up and and you know spending and sharing your thoughts with the with the audience um yeah. good luck sure. for the google play yeah. um you know the indi accelerator i think it's hosted mm. in singapore right if i'm not yeah. mistaken but it's yeah. it's a virtual event so this time it's virtual yeah. yeah i remember applied to the very first one in 2018 when i didn't even have a product i didn't even have a company registered yeah. so they kicked me out like really hard <laughs> yeah like, like going to singapore would have been really cool well, that is a very yeah. cool event five day yeah. event Correct. this thing Correct. is stressed for 12 weeks so oh okay they changed yeah, it's it drastically now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the the format is completely changed now. It's it's actually mm-hmm. more beneficial for learning. Uh, yeah. But obviously, the physical link is missing. Correct, correct. Yeah, I'm sure that'll come back mm-hmm. in some time as well. So, cool. Yeah, right, sure. Awesome. I I hope I I was able to help and inspire the students. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Like they can, yeah. they uh, like obviously people do reach out to me sometimes for on probably on my Discord or on my mail. and mm-hmm. i try to help them as much as i can 
as much as in, in my limits and whatever knowledge that I have. 